Today I'm pike fishing on a big windswept gravel pit. Earlier on I had a couple of doubles, one of which was particularly feisty and it wrecked my trace. The trace bin's looking a little bit sparse, so I'm going to show you how I make a new trace. Now there are two different types of piker. One pike has been brought up crimping and another one and the stable that I come from are the twisters. Both work perfectly well, but it's just a preference and it's a confidence and it's just something that, that I've done since I was a kid. So I'm going to show you how I twist a trace. I'm starting with my um, Drennan 7 strand 28 pound wire, which is the perfect tool for, um, for spinning. I'm going to make a trace of about 18 inches. That is the minimum that I would do for a pike trace so that you've got plenty of trace if it goes down the pike's mouth. Um, so it doesn't get exposed to the braid so, or mono, so there's no bite-offs. So for an 18-inch trace, I'm going to need to take about 24 inches off the spool. So we'll start with that. I then use strong swivels. It goes without saying. And I'm going to fix the swivel to the wire first and foremost. So I'll thread it through the swivel. I'll have a tail of about 4 inches because you want plenty of twists to give it the strength. Just bend it over slightly. You've then got the full length and then the four inch tail. I'll fix the forceps. Now your forceps need to be pretty strong at gripping because you don't want them as you're spinning to shoot off into your teeth, which will probably happen now. So I've got the weight of the forceps. I hold the main length and then I twist and let the weight of the forceps take the twist down right the way down and then tighten 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 and you can see that you've got a real nice tight twist on it and you should be left with a small tail that you can just trim off so that it's nice and neat so trim the tail off the end so that's that end very neat very tidy very strong I then go to the far end and we get to the business end where we fix the hooks. Now I'm using my old trusty size 4 semi-barbed ESOX hooks. Absolutely perfect for the job. They're strong. The semi-barbs make them very easy to unhook the pike when you've got them. And they're just brilliant for the job. So I thread the wire. Whoops, as they fly away. I told you it was windy. So I thread the wire through the eye and then depending on how far you want the hooks apart, today I'm fishing with half mackerel so I'm probably looking at four or five inches between the two hooks. So probably give seven inches there. I loop the wire around the actual treble hook at the top and I thread it back through the eye. So in effect I've taken the wire completely around the treble hook. I then go around the hook five or six times and then thread the end through the loop that I've created with the wire at the top of the hook. Pull it nice and tight and that there is the first treble that is absolutely fixed. Won't go anywhere perfect. The second hook, the top hook, is a little bit more straightforward. Loop the wire through the eye, take three or four inches, tail, fix the forceps on nice and tightly, and the same process with the twisting let the forceps hang and then twist them and let the weight of the forceps twist, twist, twist until it's really nice and tight. Don't go too far with the twisting because it will kink the wire again and it'll be too much. Cut the tail off. And there we have a perfect, strong, twisted trace which won't break when you're fishing. So we'll get that into the trace bin and that's another one waiting 
for the next pike. And here's a feisty little double that I caught on one of the traces that I made earlier. Beautiful condition, nice and dark, probably been lying in the weed for a good few weeks. Came out to play. Okay, we'll get her back now and let her grow on. Catch her when she's 20 pounds. <laughs> 